Today we're checking out the particle system. This effect will take any source and create up to 100 copies of each, each with their own direction, rotation, speed, scale and opacity. This rather unique effect might scare you off at first due to the large amount of parameters available, but once you know the basics you can make clever use of it. First we'll check out all the parameters and after that I'll show you some real world applications for this effect. To start our journey into particle land, we'll need to create a source. You can use any source you want or even footage, but for now I'll use a shaper. Under the sources tab, find the shaper and drag it onto an empty clip. To clearly see parameters like rotation, I'll change the shape. In this case, I'll use a cross. I'm feeling extra funky today, so I'll add another cross. I'll tweak it a little. Rotate it a bit and combine it using the intersection mode. That's getting really funky and that requires some funky colors. I'll use the palette with the Broadway Boogie Woogie preset. Yeah, that's looking great. Okay, enough with the shape. Let's add the particle system. Under the effects tab, look for the particle system and drag it onto your clip. We can see that all sorts of stuff is happening to our shape. Let's check out what is actually happening by going through the parameters. As with all effects, we have blend mode and opacity. The particles parameter adjusts how many particles are spawned, and lifetime dictates how long it takes before a particle is destroyed. Remember that even though a particle is invisible because its opacity has reached zero, it still exists. Mode has two options. You can either let the particle spawn continuously with the default auto mode, or spawn it manually. Each click spawns a particle. The manual mode may seem a little odd at first, but you can animate the spawn trigger. This can be used to sync the spawning of particles to the BPM or your own custom timeline. For now, I'll stick with the auto mode. All particles are created from an origin. This origin can be moved around by adjusting the X, Y and Z position. X from left to right, Y from top to bottom and Z from near to far. Next we have the velocity parameters for all three axes. These parameters adjust the direction and speed of the particles. When all values are reduced to the center, nothing is happening anymore. I'll increase them a bit now. The particle system will spawn particles in between the min and the max. So if both the min and the max are set to the same value, every particle will go into a straight line to that direction. Rotation and scale work in a similar fashion. Rotation will set the rotation speed and rotation direction of the particles. Scale will set a range of sizes that particles can be. So far you have seen particles decrease in scale and opacity over time. This is because of the scale delta and opacity delta parameters. I'd like to think of scale delta as the amount of shrinkage over time and the opacity delta as the amount of fading over time. Setting these values to 1 will bypass the fading and shrinking of the particles. Inherit velocity is a tricky parameter to use. The value of inherit determines how much of the speed and direction of the origin is translated to the particle. To demonstrate this, I'll set all the velocities to their center position. Now I'll increase the inherit parameter a bit. When I move the position of the origin, you can see that the particles copy the movement of the origin. The next parameter is gravity. This will pull your particles down or up, because why not? Wind has a similar effect, but over the x-axis. Lastly, friction slows down particles over time and can really help to create a more organic flow of motion. Now that you have a basic understanding of the particle system, Let's take a look at a real world use for this effect. In this example, the particle system plays a big role in distributing the shapes. First part of this composition are these weird pink diamond thingies. The shape started out as a solid white color. Next I used the sphere effect to create a 3D shape from the solid. This shape is going into the particle system. Here the particles are distributed among the X and Y axes. Note that only 12 particles are made, because I want them to shine individually. I maxed out the rotation, so we can look at all angles of the shape. The yellow nuggets are exactly the same, with the addition of a twitch effect and a reduction of resolution inside of the sphere effect. 
The last part of this composition is a gradient with its radius animated. As you can see, there's no one way of doing particle systems. You could spawn cats on the kick of your beat, create abstract words of art, or just mess around. Creativity is key. I hope you enjoyed this video and can start using the particle system for your own projects. See you in the next one.